Hey guys, what's happening? So, man, I must be losing my mind here. So, I've got another card to mine, uh, offer up. And this actually one's going to go on my personal computer. I'm not going to put it in my mining rig. But it's the Oris, I'm not even sure you pronounce that, but Oris Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070. And I think this is the ultimate 3070 card you can get. I'll show you that. So, yeah, so recently I just bought a Gigabyte, the Overclock Gaming, to mine with. Um, but, so yeah, I paid 820 bucks on the uh, offer up. So, I don't feel that bad because I didn't get that scalped on this card. Um, the guy gave me the original receipt and he paid $705 for it. So, and I paid $820, so not that bad. I mean, I've seen these cards getting scalped for like uh, $1,200. Bucks. So, this thing is brand new, unopened. And I'm going to run it here on my test bench. And if you saw this in another video, it's uh, my 3D printed. Uh, I designed that Fusion 360. It's a 3D printed uh, little test, bed, test rig mining bench thing here with the integrated uh, power supply underneath. So it makes it a more compact unit. Alright, so yeah, I'll put a link down below if you want that. So, Alright, let's take a look at this thing. So this, is, I think, is the ultimate 3070 card you can get. Um, and look how... Look how thick this thing is. This thing is like three slot lengths. So yeah, no joke. Yeah, yeah brand new, unopened, so... Yeah, these things are so hard to find, you can't buy them in the stores anymore, you know, they're just all being scalped. But this one also has like this, uh, has like this crazy uh, LCD here in the front. So you can do like, uh, it shows like temp and you can do your own, own bitmap on there. And, uh, but look at the cool fan arrangement. Uh, they're overlapping fans. Yeah, look like how big that heatsink is. It's a crazy oversized heatsink. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this is going to go to my personal machine, but I'm first going to fire up, uh, fire it up on my test bench here, and we'll run Hive OS on there. And Yeah, I expect to get to get about the same as the other one, probably about 60 mega hash reliability, maybe about 130 watt. But I'm probably not going to tweak it too much because it's going to be my personal computer. Uh, so it's probably going to go down to about 60, and I'm not going to bring it because I need my computer to be reliable. So I'm um, not going to tweak it too much. But when I first get it on... Uh, I haven't let it mine here for a second, but yeah, it came with a little sticker too. But yeah, actually, let me grab it. Let me show you, compare it with my other cards and see, so I can show you how thick it is. Okay, so that's my other 30, 3070 right there. Gigabyte overclocked, and that's a Sapphire RX 57 XT. But yeah, look how thick this thing is. Oh, well, yeah, it's probably about another half inch longer. It's actually, it feels like it's, you know, it might be four card lengths. I don't even know. It's really thick. Yeah, because this looks like this one that takes up three. Well, if you look at the overhang in there, but this thing is thick. Look at that. Yeah, get that in the light. All right. All right, so here's the back side of the card. Yeah, I do actually like how these cars now are doing, like, the blow-through. Um, what kind of sucks, though, if you have a lot of cards that are stacked together, though, what happens is it blows the hot air through this and goes right into the fan of the other card. So it creates, like, a heat, heat spot. You know, like a heat issue. For the, if you have a multiple three-card fan cars in there, it's just sucking the hot air from the other card. So, I've noticed that down the line will get hotter and hotter and hotter. Alright, so my test bench rig is an old Core 2 Quad DDR2 memory. So, um, so far it's been able to fire up my other card. So, uh, hopefully it'll fire this one up too. We'll, we'll see. But like I said, this is a really old motherboard. And it's been working fine for... I've actually had this thing for 10 years. So... Yeah, another cool thing about this uh, card, too, is you can do six monitors. So I, I actually have quad monitors, but, uh, yeah, you can do six if you want to do. It's uh, three HDMI and three uh, DisplayPort. All right, so I got the DisplayPort in, and I have a monitor right above it, my test bench monitor. All right, got some video. Let's see if it boots up. At first, I got a, a BIOS beep, and I didn't know if that was... Some warnings detected. Huh. Alright. Let's see if it boots. Alright, cool. Um, Alright. I'm going to do a quick driver update. Yeah, look at the screen. <laughs> it's kind of funny. 
Yeah, I'll probably end up just putting the temp on there. All right, so there's a card. Hope you can see. Uh, I mean, there's not too much glare. But I'm gonna apply a fly cheap to it. I'm gonna use uh, G minor. For some reason, I was the only I can get to work with my other 3070. So I'm applying that. We'll do a quick minor. And minor. Come back, we'll see. I mean, I said I have no overclock settings, so I'm assuming it's going to pull a lot of power and uh, probably get about 50 mega hash. All right, so I keep on getting the no device found, and it looks kind of odd here in Hive. So I don't know if it's a motherboard or what it is. I mean, this is a really old motherboard. So, yeah, I don't know. So I even changed my motherboard. This is a second generation Core i5, but uh, yeah, I think you're going to need a newer motherboard because I can't get this to work on. It doesn't like it. It definitely is acting uh, a little crazy with these other motherboards. At least the older motherboards. So I guess I'll try my Asus 4th Gen i7. Alright, so I hope you can see that, but this is my uh, main computer here, the, the quad monitor setup here. And uh, actually, I got a, another liquid cooler coming in because that heat, it creates like a hot box in there with a the, with the fan cover on there. So I'm going to do a liquid cooler upgrade. So. But that's the card, and like I said, I'm not going to stretch it too much because it's my personal workstation. So I don't want this thing to crash while I'm doing. Uh, I mainly, like I said, I do like 3D modeling and stuff, and I was like crypto mining, but uh, you know, video editing for these videos. But um, yeah, I don't really play games. So all right, all right. So here is nice hash, and so right now I'm actually not getting the all the mega hash I could possibly get because I'm recording this video. But uh, last night it was in about 50 mega hash and uh, pretty consistent. I could probably bring up the uh, mega hash up to about 60, which I did on my other card. Uh, but I'd have to bring up the memory clock. And actually that would generate more heat. Uh, but also I'm running full powers. I'm probably doing about 190 watt. But uh, yeah, I mean, pretty cool card so far. I mean, definitely the nicest card I've ever owned. I mean, definitely the most expensive video card I've ever owned too also. But, but let me show you what my, my other, the other video I did, the previous video. Um, this is actually the, the card that I took out of the computer, the GTX 1660 Super. And I was able to bump that up to about 28 mega hash and down to 75 watt. So this thing is actually really efficient. But this is the other card that I did the uh, video about, the 3070. It's the non, it's the kind of like the generic, Gigabyte's generic version of the 3070, three fan. Um, 60 mega hash and about 135 watt. I'm actually, I'm slowly bringing down the wattage, and I'm, I'm hoping to get down to about 120 watt. Um, I could push up the mega hash to 64, which I had it up there, but it becomes a little bit unstable. And for me, I guess I'd rather have stability, because sometimes I don't see, I don't look at these cards, and it would, it would, I would lose more money for this thing being down for a couple hours, because I didn't see it, versus trying to squeeze every single mega hash out of it. But, all right, guys, cool card, awesome card. You know?